I'll start recording. All right. So, um, yeah, now there you go, Cameron. Get better hardware to make it faster. Yeah. All right. So we talked about uh, the typical classical hacking stuff here where you use tools, you know, like a Hashcat and Metasploit. We did a few of them. And, and then you wonder, if what, why don't you write your own tools? And that's what I'm going to do here. And uh, I think we can use Google Colab for this. So you guys already know how Google Colab works. So there's a, uh, you can get a couple flags to show that you got your Colab working. And uh, then I got a couple challenges um, to try things here. So the first thing is to learn how to manipulate strings. And I'm going to, there's some simple string processing here. This is going to be important in the challenges that are coming up. So if you run this code here, you see how Python handles strings. So I define a greeting called hello world, and then you can refer to the first three characters with 0 colon 3, or the next three characters with 3 colon 6, or the last three characters minus 3 colon, or you can search for something. Like you can find the comma inside the string, and it'll give you a number, which is the numerical location of the comma. And then you can print greet colon A to get the portion before the comma. So those are some simple ways to manipulate strings. And they're very nice. And now to send and receive data from a server. These are the classic BSD raw sockets that the foundation of the Internet. Um, you know, the basic TCP communications of the Internet using Python version of the original socket library. So you import a socket library, then you define a socket, then you connect to a server and a port. And that's what a socket is, a connection from your end server and port to their end server and port. So this is the uh, uh, DNS name and there's the port number. After you connect, that will perform the TCP handshake, syn, synac, ac, and then um, the server may respond with some data right away if it's configured to send a banner. And so you'll print what's received up to 1,024 bytes. And this will print what comes back. Then I'm going to send hello from Python and a carriage return. And the server will reply to that and uh, give me print the response. And here it's going to print just the first five letters of the response. So you see how it goes? Now this server has a prompt. When you first connect, it says, hello, what have you to say? You send it anything you want, and it just echoes it back to you. It says, you said this. And so in the first five letters of the response are U space S. So this just shows how to connect to a server and how to process data that comes back from the server. So given that information, um, let's make, this is the echo program, and so you got some challenges. Send a goodbye to the server, and you'll get a flag and here, it gets a little tougher. Your server is going to send you uh, your number. Your number is 90. You have to add one to it and send it back. So you're going to have to take the response from the server, put it in a string, find the number in it, and turn that into a number to add one to it. Now, for the next bit, we're going to need loops. And here's how loops look in Python. Um, which I've actually gr uh, grown to love. At first, they weren't the way I was used to it from other languages like C, but I've gotten used to it. What you do, the range command will count from 0 up to, but not including this number. So range of 3 is 0, 1, and 2. Whenever you have a command in Python that refers to other commands after it, you put a colon. And after that, you indent the next line and with any combination of tabs and spaces. And then you indent all the lines the same amount that you want to be in the loop. And when you stop indenting, that's the end of the loop. So this is pretty nice. So the only thing it's going to do three times is print. So it does. You can also have letters in a string. And it will just count through the letters. So C-A-T will print. So you can make letters of numbers or loops. And so now, this one here, you have to add or subtract. It's going to tell you to subtract these numbers, but add those numbers. every, And you have to give it the right answer. And you have to get five of these in a row correct within a couple of seconds, which means you have to automate it. You don't have time to do it manually. And then you'll get a flag. Now, 
the string processing we've done here is modern string processing. And if you've done uh, C programming, or for that matter, Python 2 programming, you might have a bad habit, which I had, of thinking that a string is an array of bytes, one byte per character with ASCII encoding. So in Python 2, you can store data like this, 4142FF, 41 in hex is a capital A, 42 is B, and an FF byte is not a valid ASCII code. ASCII codes only go up to 127, and this is 255, so it'll appear as just a literal byte storing FF. And if you print the bytes one by one, A0, A1, and A2, they print out, and the last one is FF. But if you do the same thing in Python 3, you get a strange answer, which really confused me at first. 41, 42, FF. This is how you make literal bytes in Python in a string. Backslash x means this is a hexadecimal byte to just put in there. If you put in the byte FF, it prints Y umlaut. And you, if you print these characters, 0, 1, and 2, it's A, B, and Y umlaut. So what is that Y umlaut thing? What's going on is that Y umlaut thing is two bytes. And you can see it by encoding it back to a string. Um, I think back to bytes. But this shows you what's been created there. The hex value of the zero of the bytes one by one, 41, 42. When you put in an FF here into a literal string, it turned into a C3BF. So this is confusing to me. If you think that one byte is a character, what's going on, of course, is it's Unicode. All modern languages no longer use ASCII, one byte per character. That's not good enough because there's all these other languages, Chinese and Japanese and Arabic and Cyrillic and everything. There's a lot more than 127 characters, so they use Unicode, and Unicode works like the IP version 4 address space. The old ASCII codes are here, and they're stored with just one byte, but then there's characters stored with two bytes, three bytes, and four bytes to for a total of two million code points. So you can encode two, two million characters in Unicode, and they have variable length. So when you define a string by just having characters one by one, each one of these is a Unicode character of whatever length it has to be. And when you cut a string up like we did up here, in the first three letters and the first five letters of strings, you're getting the first five Unicode characters, which may in each be between one to four bytes long. So it's logical. The strings are strings of characters, and you're counting the characters, but it no longer has a one-to-one -one correlation with bytes. There's a separate data structure called a byte string, a byte array. Um, so uh, here's examples. Each uni has a variable length from one to four bytes. So let's try these to see how Unicode is handled in Python. Um, if you go here, the first one is going to be backslash x41. That's a single byte, 41. Here's Unicode with a lot of zeros going to 41. Then you always have to specify all four bytes in this syntax backslash u. Not that it's necessarily going to take four bytes to store, but the backslash u format requires that. Then you can encode it and take this one and encode it, the Unicode 41. Let's see how these look. So this is an A, and this is also a capital A. This is a byte value encoding the character A, and so is the next one. And when you've encoded it, if you then take it back to hex, you'll get the hex number. So these are the three data types that I seem to spend most of my life in Python coping with. Strings, byte arrays, and numbers. And of course, you can't add a number to anything other than a number. And you often, I spent a lot of time turning strings into byte values and back and forth, turning strings into numbers, byte values into numbers, and so on. So you can do things on them. Anyway. There's a few flags to find here, find some Unicode characters, and there's some challenges up here to practice string handling and networking in Python. So that's the first few challenges to solve. I'll stop this video.